we're doing step three of the Holly Sniper install. The purpose and intention of this installation is to show that even an idiot can get this done correctly. So we're still on that path. But I'm back, so I'm gonna distract you and hold you back. Rachel's back, so I'm gonna have Prevent distractions. From succeeding. She's gonna stop me from succeeding. Okay. Bit of a somber mood. I'm starting to the realization's coming to me that I might not be able to even get this done in time to make it to the solid axle summit. I'm a bit under the under the gun here. And I know that I have a lot still to get done, but I just I'm going back to a graveyard shift that I wasn't on before, which I do enjoy working, but it's gonna really. It happened sooner than expected. It happened a lot sooner than I was thought I was going to, and it's gonna command a lot of my time. So, the necessity now for this project, especially, is to try to get things done quickly, efficiently, but do it correctly the first time. So, my roadblock that I ran into with step two was one: I didn't have any heat shrink, which I went out and got. A, a myriad of sizes from Amazon and I got some shortened heat shrink pieces and then I got some electrical connectors right here pretty cool also bought on Amazon another thing I ran into see how that's now proudly hanging I got a piece of metal similar to this piece right here this was the piece of metal. <laughs> you just trimmed it? I cut it, I drilled a hole in it, I scuffed up the back side of the plastic piece of that fuse box, and I drilled a hole in the metal, and I made my own bracket. Fabrication. I need to get my heat gun, which seems kind of stupid because it's a thousand degrees outside. The first thing I want to start with is the hot end ground to the battery. That's this red and blue wire. So I'm gonna get a small sample of the heat shrink tubing, because I ordered a bunch of different sizes. And I wanna see how much it shrinks. Yeah, I've got plenty of wiring, at least with this part. So I'm gonna test how much this uh, shrinks. Hot, hot. Yeah, I should wear gloves. Let's be honest. <laughs> when you're holding something that's literally meant to shrink as you eat it, it's gonna be a little warm. You know what though, that's still kind of loose. Go down size? No, that's actually okay. That's okay, I like that. You wanna show it? I like that. That's you just. Know what size you used? No. Okay. No. I'll tell you in the comments. Let's find out. The size for that that I just did, one quarter inch, six point four millimeters. Battery's here. This is going to kind of have some slack to it, but ultimately, the red one is going to be cut off right about there. So, wait, wait. I'm going to cut stuff. I'm gonna use these wire cutters I spent a ton of money on. Also pretty excited about the, uh, sorry, got distracted there. The extra wiring that I'm gonna have out of this. I'm gonna have a bunch of like automotive wiring to use. So, boom. It's a little extra slack for the ground. But that's gonna be attached like right there. So the black has to be longer? Yeah, so the black one's gonna be a little bit longer, which is customary for that color of wiring. Mm -hmm. Historically. Putting it right in your mouth? Most, yes. Most, uh, okay. So what I wanna do here is give the people thinking about this the confidence they need to do it themselves. A project like this becomes so overwhelming and scary. It's like, no, it's not that hard. We can do this. I want to show that we can. So I'm going to cut this off about right here. And we'll heat shrink the living shit out of this. What's the purpose of heat shrinking? Honestly, it's just to protect the wire itself. 
So it's going to be in the engine bay, Is and I want extra? something. Yeah, a little extra protection. I realize I need a little slack at the end to put on a fitting. And I'm also going to need a little, you know, so that's the tube. Now I'm going to get my heat gun and just melt the sucker. Now we need to strip a little bit of wire off. Uh, I think this is 12 gauge, so we'll... Cool, start there. And then I need a piece of fitting here that can go on the battery. So it's big enough to fit on the battery. Okay, so I'll take my crimping tool. Crimp it down. So now that's crimped. Oh, you know what I wanted to do though? Shoot. And do it. I'm gonna do this one over again. Okay. You gonna shrink wrap the rest of it? So I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna shrink wrap the end of it. Let's see if that I need to use a different crimp setting. I'm gonna run through these pretty fast. I did buy a ton of them. These are the only two that are actually going on the battery terminal, so. Okay. Okay, that's extremely permanent. So now I'm gonna heat shrink this little guy real quick. The yeah, the yellow part. Oh boy, it's gonna get hot with all this heat shrinking. Okay, ah, who hot? <laughs> That's it now, heat shrinks. It's a pretty good seal. You can see it's all, oh. Very good melt. Oh no, oh crap. Oh no. Small issue. This is still hot, and I put the heat. Did you jump the gun a little bit? Yeah, I jumped the gun a little bit. So you meant to put the black heat shrink over the yellow heat shrink. shrink. Yes, but the yellow heat shrink was still extremely hot, so it prematurely melted it. So I have to s slice. Man, this is really not working out that well for showing how easy this is. You're going to want to wait a little bit before you put the other part of the heat shrink on there. I'm going like heat shrink crazy. Is it necessary? I don't know if it's necessary or not. I honestly, I just... Somebody said I needed to solder this, and I was like, well, I don't, I don't have a soldering gun. I don't want to buy a soldering gun right now. So there, I move, move the heat shrink over. I'm going to hit it one more time. And normally there'd be a lot more material on there to seal up, but I cut it too short. That's the hot side. I will now repeat that entire process. Oh wait, does that fit? Oh yeah, it does. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the entire process for the um, ground. the ground. These two, the yellow and pink. You guys, if you guys remember, these are going to the coil. Well, that works perfect. I like it. Is it the same size they used on the other ones? No. Now this one I'm using. This is 4.8 millimeter. Now there was a American size. A little trial and error. It's practicing. Yeah. Focused. Branch off. So we'll leave a little extra. So let's do right about here. There's some kinks. Are you just doing the pink or is the yellow going in too? It's pink and yellow. I'm close. So I don't know how. I can straighten the pink out. Make it easier. And make it easier to. Yeah, that's going better. Well, it was for a second. This is a huge pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. Hope that's hope it's worth it. Protecting these stupid dumb wires. Do they have to be shrink wrapped together? Or could you just do them by themselves? No, I'd rather do it together because. Makes for it cleaner. Yeah, it makes for it cleaner. Better. Cleaner install, you know. I know the straighter the better. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Weird, it's super hot. Now that this is cold though, I can move this little guy into place. Did you ever think you'd see on Project Wrong Way, Ben freaking out? Burning himself? No, no, that part I think they'd remember. But just me putting together harnesses in a slow, meticulous, fashion. slow, meticulous manner to where things look good and it's where I want it to be. You've, you've shown growth. It's a growth. big step for me. You've shown growth. So this guy's starting to cool down now, but it's got a nice little rubble, rubble, protectable <laughs> shield on it. Positive and negative. So let me consult the instructions real quick. I know, another. What? The yellow wire goes to the coil. The pink wire goes to ignition, which somebody mentioned it. Hey man, don't, don't put it to the coil, put it on the ignition. If GA Architect from I Hate Mud had told me uh, different than I would do that. I would I would put this to my ignition But I'm using an FJ 60 electronic distributor and coil per his instructions, which I trust if I wire the ignition to The positive on the coil like you mentioned It's gonna be the same as if I were to wire it to the ignition hot So we'll see if it doesn't work. I'll have to cut the whole heat shrink and do it all over but I, I trust the dude quite a bit. So we'll do about like that. All right, I'll put that in my wiring pile. By the time I'm done with this, I'm gonna have my whole very own wiring harness. I've been saving every bit of wiring that I've uh, got. 18 gauge wires? Yeah, probably about 18 gauge wires. Very tiny things. So I'm gonna grab two of my little shrinkers Shrink wrappers. Oh wait, first I want to get two small, small things. It's trial and error. I'm gonna thread these two on here, right there. All this stuff I bought on Amazon for next to nothing. Okay, I'm gonna cramp it down like a mofo. So I, I get the recommendation, you guys, to solder everything because I don't want to be but I think if I do this good, the way I'm doing it right now, I won't be chasing down wiring issues 20 years from now. Because I'll be dead. <laughs> Ow! Shit! So I'm just kind of rolling it back and forth to make sure it's a good seal. Holy monkeys. That's the ground. So this is the four you did today. Yeah, I'm, I got one more, the fuel pump one to do. You that one. Them? Yeah, I'm gonna attach these two. Oops. Rachel's in a beautiful oh. set. Pink goes to the positive. Dude. Get a good read on that. That just looks. I still have a couple things to wire up to these batteries. One of them being the winch and the ARB air compressor. The locker? So just the compressor for the locker. That looks way cleaner than when I had it. Good job, Let's do a couple zip ties real quick. That was one thing I want to make sure I did with this wiring. Let's make it look as clean as possible. The last piece of unattached wiring is the fuel pump. So yeah, that's the fuel pump. Um, I gotta pull this blue wire over here. And there's an existing wiring harness this guy, which looks like it's been struck by a weed eater. Is it old? No, it just looks that way because I freaking hit it with a wire wheel about a million times. So what does that harness go to? What? What does the existing harness go to? Oh, I don't, um, I don't know. It's dirt and crap hit me in the eye. No eye pro? 
No, but I do know that I'm gonna have so much blue wire. Yeah! And I'm gonna do the same process that I did with all the other wires, you guys. I think this is 12 gauge wire. Yeah. This says 14 to 16, but that, that one fits pretty good. And we have these guys. Ah. That one fits pretty loose. So I'm gonna do the, the blue one and see how that works. Oh, it matches at least. Huh? It matches. Yeah, that's so exactly. you're not gonna do a sleeve though in the very end? Ha ha ha, that's my girl right there. Yes, I am gonna do a sleeve at the end. As a matter of fact, why don't I use some of this sleeve stuff that I bought to make a really long sleeve. So we got it like a super good seal. Good call, honey, good call. Jumped in there at the nick of time. I was about to <laughs> fumble F this. Wiring is my huge fear when it comes to automotive stuff. Electrical things and wiring. Just anybody else who has the same do it. Unnatural fear. One, I understand. And two, if I can do it, you can too. This is a Harbor Freight heat gun. These are wiring bits that I bought on Amazon. What did we learn? Don't Wait. don't rush. I was about to rush. <laughs> That's still effing hot, dude. <laughs> Whip it's, it around the <laughs> air. <laughs> Look it. Do it. I like that. I like that stuff. And I like making my wiring a little bit more secure. You know what? I'm going to use the red wire to make a ground. Because it appears to be the same gauge. And... Yeah, one second. Let me go underneath real quick. You stay up there. I am constructing a ground wire for the fuel pump. Okay. And I'm using some of the leftover wire. What do you connect the other end to though? So one part goes to the negative terminal on the fuel pump. Yeah. The other part, you just bolt it down to something like on the frame so it grounds it. Mm -hmm. Just a metal ground. Yeah. Luckily, there's a bunch of bolts down there and they're all about this wide. So I know what size to use here. <laughs> if you guys haven't noticed, I'm really into this. Really into the. Oh, da, da. Making my way down ground. <laughs> it's like that song, Making My Way Downtown, but instead it's Making My Own New Ground. We'll attach it to right here. I'm gonna run it up above and probably hook it onto that bolt right there. See? Easy. The heat shrink I bought, I bought a box of like a bunch of different tiny ones. I didn't use those as much as I thought I would. It was like $5.97. The long tubes, five foot lengths, also on Amazon, is about $5. And this box of connectors, I believe was $19. It does, it does add up, but having these attachments, I can use them in the future and I can use them on a, a bunch of other stuff. This is the ground I made. I will install that on the fuel pump next episode when I am routing the fuel lines. Let's go over real quick what we did. We ran the fuel line to the fuel pump and did my wizardry, wire wizardry on it. We ran the hot, or the positive and the yellow to the negative to my FJ60 ignition coil. We ran the hot to my battery and the ground. So that's it. That's the wiring for the sniper. So anybody who's thinking, hey man, I'm freaking out about this. It's a big deal. It's not, that's all the wiring. I just did it. I've connected, this is the 10 pin connector the one that I'm not going to use. This is the connection to the O2 sensor, which I need to, like, I need to zip tie and attach it to something so it's out of the way. My water tent sensor is already connected. 
I have the only two things that aren't connected right now for the Holly Sniper is this little piece, which this guy goes to. I'm not gonna plug that in yet. What is that? This is the little sniper screen. What the hell was that? Oh dude, that's like a dr disc drive. Shit. I'm gonna put this back in there. Whoops. <laughs> it's fine. This is going to be mounted. I'll show you. Here. And that's fuel injection, is that what Yeah. So I'm gonna mount the mount itself right where the choke used to be, and then I'm gonna run the wire through this little rubber plug right here. Technically, the last thing I have to hook up wiring-wise is this screen, which I'm not going to hook up yet, but that's the final part for that. That means the next portion of this installation is the fuel lines. I need to do all the fuel lines. So once I get that done, we're putting gas in the tank and we're going to try to turn it on. I desperately wanted to finish this in time for the Rubathon, which is two weeks away. I'm not going to, it's not going to be that. It's not going to be possible. I am even more concerned that I'm not going to be able to finish this in time for the Solid Axle Summit. I'm going to try to focus as best I can. I'm going to get as much as I can done. And I might have a couple build parties or bring some, bring some people over for help. I got a million things now that I'm trying to button up and get done and completed. Thank you guys for watching, subscribing, liking, sharing. Um, and I'm glad Rachel's back holding the camera and holding other things like my heart. And I'm not kidding. She literally has nothing on on her dress. I was super distracted this whole time. And look what I got done. See you on the next episode of Project Runway where we do step four, the fuel lines. Leave your comments below. If you see any issues I have, point them out because I'll fix them and I'll bring it up later. Thank you.